Or although I, I hate, usually when I'm here, it means the pastor's sick. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm glad that uh, I'm able to uh, give him the chance when he needs to stay home, to stay home. And uh, let me tell you, if a preacher stays home because he's sick, he's sick. Uh, and no matter who comes to preach from your pulpit, you're nervous. Because uh, pastors uh, sort of are jealous about their pulpit. And so uh, he's sitting at home right now. Can he hear me? Good. Uh, he will hear me eventually. Okay, well, that's a little scary. But anyway, <laughs> um, they, they, they don't like, preachers don't like to give up their pulpit. And uh, I, it, to me, it, it's, uh, it's a privilege. And um, I'm, I'm pleased that he has enough confidence in me that he, he would give me this opportunity. Uh, good to be with you again. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Um, this is sort of one of those d uh, dates that preachers really, really like to be in their pulpit because it's when you sort of project the year ahead. And I, 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 Brother Ken said, in fact, that was what he planned to do today, but he's not doing it, and I'm not going to present his vision. He'll do that when he can stand in the pulpit again. But I do want to give you some advice for the new year. I mean, a perfect date to do that. Some advice for the new year. And we're going to read, this is a historic time in the, uh, the history of the nation of Israel. Uh, it's that date when uh, there's a leadership change. And the leadership change is after 40 years of having the same leader. In the United States, we change every four if we so choose. Uh, in Israel, it had been 40 years. So let's read Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9 to begin. It says, after the death... Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall me meditate on it in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success." So, again, it's a, it, it's a unique time in the, the history of the nation of Israel. Uh, 40 years, for 40 years, Moses has been their leader. And they've just observed a 30-day period of mourning. And uh, you wonder what they were feeling as a nation. You wonder what they were thinking. Uh, it was just they were beginning or getting ready to embark on a, a, a brave new adventure. Sort of what, like we're about to do here in 2022. And basically, the, the, the instructions that Joshua receives from uh, the Lord for himself and for Israel is, okay, you can look back for one last time, but make it the last time. I mean, he says to him, he says, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua knew that. That was pretty obvious. They just had 30 days of mourning. You knew that Moses was dead. Uh, and, 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 you know, in a unique, it was a very unique thing. You know, Moses was buried by God himself. It's the only person in the entire scripture. You can read the, the entire Bible and you'll only find one occasion where God buried a person. He buried Moses' body. I have no doubt it was because he didn't want it to become a shrine. He didn't want the children of Israel to eventually uh, get into idolatry uh, involving the, the, the body or the burial of Moses. But, but God buried Moses. Now, Moses is dead, Joshua. Uh, an era had ended. It had ended forever. Moses was not coming back. Um, it brought sadness. 
I have no doubt that there were a lot of people who, who, who weren't doing a, a symbolic or a, or a na- nation-ordered uh, time of mourning for Moses. They were actually mourning. Remember that there was no person alive at that point among his, uh, the Israelites, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, who, had, uh, who knew any other leadership position being occupied by anyone but Moses. Every other person in all of their lifetime had only had one leader, and that was Moses. They, 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 were, they were sad. They were mourning. They, were, they had anxiety. They, they didn't know what was coming up. Well, you know, day before yesterday, like it or not, 2021 ended. I, you know, I, I think for a whole bunch of us, it was sort of good riddance. Uh, it, 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 generally speaking, it was not a good year. For some people, it was a great year. Some people got married in 21. Some people had their first child in 21. Some people uh, got over an illness in 21. There's been some good news, but uh, it's sort of been few and far between. But 2021 is over. Dead and gone. Um, We don't know what's coming. But I think that in order to progress, in order to have a good 2022, we have to do what, uh, what God ordered Joshua to do, and that was, okay, stop dwelling on the past. Moses is dead. 2021 is gone. I think that he was saying basically to Joshua, you know what, Joshua? You and Israel need to leave some things behind. You need to leave a, a lot of the things that have happened in these 40 years. You've just got to uh, stop it. Stop it. Folks, 21, 2021, if it was a normal year, there were some people that let you down. There were some people that did things that you thought they just absolutely had no reason to do. You may have some bitterness. You may have some grudges. And some of that bitterness and some of those grudges, you shake the dust off of it every once in a while just to make sure you don't forget. Sort of like... I've heard the story about the preacher's son. You know, preacher's kids are different. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> preacher's kids are different. Uh, the, the family cat died, and dad told his son to go out and bury the cat. Well, you know, he had seen his dad perform all these funerals, and he thought, you can't just go bury a cat. You've got to have a funeral. And so invited some of the neighborhood kids and preached a funeral sermon. They buried the cat. They found a shoebox, buried, buried the cat. For some reason or other, they left the cat's tail sticking up out of the ground, and they buried it. Well, the next day, the preacher's son got up and he said, you know, I, I didn't say everything I've heard my dad say at funerals. So he called his friends together. They, they grabbed the tail of the cat, pulled it up, and had another funeral service. Buried him again. Next day, it occurred to him that he had forgotten something else. They grabbed the cat's tail, pulled it up. Well, this happened for several days until, mercifully, the cat's tail rotted off. Well, that's sort of what people do with old grudges and bitterness. They say they bury them. We're not going to bring this up anymore. This isn't going to ruin my life anymore. And then they grab it by the tail and yank it up again and go over it all over again. I don't doubt that some people have done things to you that you did not deserve. Guess what? That's the way this world is. You can't control that, but you can control how you respond. You can control how often you dig the dead cat up. That's within your control. And my advice to you is leave those grudges and bitterness and hurt feelings in 2021. They're dead. They're gone. You can't do anything about them. Just leave them there. You know, I I had... The, uh, I don't know what you, it wasn't a privilege or an honor. I had the disgusting responsibility of battling cancer in my lifetime several times. Uh, Bladder cancer, prostate cancer, throat cancer, lymph node cancer, skin cancer. I'm a high achiever, so I try to do it all, you know. Um, I remember the first time they diagnosed me with cancer. I remember I went home and I I sat down and said, man, I got cancer. David, you, you've got cancer. My grandpa died of cancer. All kinds of friends have died of cancer. I'd lay down to go to sleep at night. You know what my last thought was before I went to sleep? David, you've got cancer. 
I'd wake up in the morning. You know what my first thought was? David, you got cancer. This went on for quite a while until finally I thought, you know, this could get old. <laughs> but that's what some people do with those grudges. They try to go to sleep at night. You know what comes to mind? I can't believe he did that to me. After all that I've done for him and all the favors I've done for him and the good things, I just can't believe he did that to me. And they wake up in the morning, you know what the first thought is? Can't believe he did that to me. I just can't believe it. Or she. Well, you're losing sleep about it. They aren't. You can choose to leave it in 2021, or you can go buy some more sleeping pills. It's sort of in, in your hands what you do. But my advice to you is to leave it in 2021. Because if you have convinced yourself that you're the only one that has suffered abuse at the hand of a friend, you are wrong. You're wrong. And do you understand the harm that you do to yourself and you do to others when you keep those things alive? Harboring bitterness. But do you know harboring bitterness and harboring, and, and harboring grudges is disobedience and defiance to the Lord's will. We are commanded to forgive. We are not commanded to forgive the people that are forgivable. We're, we are ordered to forgive the ones that are, in our viewpoint, unforgivable. And you know why? Because the Lord Jesus has forgiven us of what is unforgivable. And we're told by Paul that we should forgive as we have been forgiven. Wow, is that a pretty high bar or what? Because you know how the Lord forgave me? He forgave me once and then I did it again. And he forgave me twice, and then I did it again. And that's been going on for now about 72 years. And he tells me I should forgive as I have been forgiven. Take the risk of forgiveness. And I know it's a risk. I know it's a risk. I, I, I preached a sermon on forgiveness years ago that my, in my long career pastoring in the United States of 11 months. <laughs> And I remember after I preached that sermon that one of the deacons met me at the door and he said, uh, oh, we can't do that. Really? Now, I just read it out of scripture. How can you say you can't do it? But that's what the deacon said. You, I, we, can't, we can't just forgive people. He said, they'll take advantage of us. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. It is a risk that you take that if you forgive someone, they, turn, they slap you on one cheek and, and then you have to turn the other cheek. Wait a minute. Isn't that in the Bible? <laughs> yeah. You have to take the risk and forgive because we want to be forgiven, don't we? Psalms 32, uh, verse 1. I, I, I want to read that to you, and, and then I want to add, add a little something. It says, uh, be, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. That does not say blessed is the one who has never failed. It doesn't say blessed is the one who's never sinned. Blessed is the one who have never committed an error. It says blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. I've been forgiven, so I must forgive. Uh, a, a lot of people are carrying loads today that they should not be carrying. Again, the load may be bitterness towards someone else, but the load almost might be, also might be uh, that you're not willing to forgive yourself of something that God himself has already said is forgiven. Do you do that? I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I messed this up so bad. If God's forgiven me, I have the right to forgive myself. Now, others may not forgive me. But that really doesn't matter. My relationship with God is what matters. We, we, we could uh, let this heavy burden continue in our lives and destroy our lives, or we can say, you know what? God's forgiven me. I forgive myself, and I'm now I'm going to go on and do it, be a better person. But there's something else we ought to leave in 2021, and this may sort of surprise you. And, and it's, it's sort of difficult for those of us who are over the age of 39 and that is, we sort of have to leave our spiritual victories in the past. Now, I, I love telling stories. 
My, my kids, when I preach, they tell me how many times I've told that story. Every time I tell the story, I've started thinking about maybe just putting a number on them and just say number 23, and they'll all know which one I'm talking about. But uh, I like telling stories, and I have to actually think it through a little more now because at my age, it's sort of neat to just dwell on the past. I've had, I've had so much fun. <laughs> you know, I, I sort of laugh at people and say, oh, I'm, oh, Brother David, I'm, I'm so, you, you impress me so much with your sacrifice. I don't know where the word came from. It's ne- I don't ever believe it's a sacrifice to be right in the smack dab middle of the Lord's will. If that's a sacrifice, I mean, what, what could a blessing be? I, I've seen so many great things. I've seen uh, cultures changed. I've seen, I, I've seen just great things. And it would be easy to just sit around and talk about all the great things that have happened. But guess what? We're in 2022, and it's time to make some new things happen. Um, people ask me sometimes, how, how, how much longer are you going to work? Well, preachers are like cowboys. They die in the saddle. Uh, but Christians are like cowboys. They die in the saddle. You might have, have, have helped drill oil all your life, and you say, well, now I'm retired. Well, you may be dry, retired as an oil man, but you're not retired as a Christian. We all have something we can contribute until the day we die. And, in fact, our major contribution might be in those last days before we die as we leave a legacy with our grandkids and our, our great-grandkids, and we tell them about how, how good it is to know you're going home to be with Jesus. I don't know. So we've got to leave even the good stuff in 2021. I mean, Israel had a lot of good things they could talk about. And yet God turned to Joshua and said, Joshua, Moses is dead. So let's get it going. He didn't say Moses was unimportant. He didn't say Moses didn't do anything good. Uh, Moses was a great man. But Moses was gone. And he said, Joshua, leave those 40 years behind Leave the past in the past. And now, Joshua, let's get going. So my first bit of advice is, advice is to, to leave, uh, uh, leave some things in the past. Look, at the ba- look, look back. You can look back, but do it for the last time. Now let's look to the future. My second piece of advice would be take action, resolve things, and do it now at the very beginning of the year. Uh, Joshua was instructed later. He said, now, now you've got to get the people ready because you're going to be crossing the Jordan. Now, there was no bridge there. It wasn't just get on the bridge and cross over. In fact, it was a river that they didn't know how uh, to get across. Now, I, I've, seen, I've seen the Jordan in it, it, its headwaters, and it's not very impressive. Uh, it, like I was telling some folks in Sunday school class, we're here in, in, in uh in, in South Arkansas, or in, in Arkansas, we would call it sort of a, a, a creek <laughs> rather than a river. But that isn't where they were at, and it was a river. And how were they going to get across and carrying all their things and carrying their kids and, and getting their sheep across? How were they going to do that? Uh, he said, you got to get ready to cross the Jordan. And there was no reason to wait. It, it, it's right now. He said, but you, you, you've got to do this, and you need to do it right now. And then he says to him, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, I've already given you every place you're going to step foot on. 30 years. I, I've already determined I'm going to give it to you. Before they'd even entered the promised land, the promised land was already theirs. Now, there were some rules along the way, and sometimes they broke them, and some guy, God had to discipline them. But God's the owner of everything, and if he says it's yours, it's yours. And he said, this, this, is, this is all yours. Everywhere you set your foot. Now, I don't think that was just a catchy phrase. That's actually literally what he meant. Every time they took a step, wherever that footprint fell, it already belonged to them. But they had to get across the River Jordan. Now, how are they going to get across the River Jordan? Well, the Lord said, get the priest together, uh, get the Ark of the Covenant, and start walking. And, and, and listen, it wasn't. And then when the river opens, walk through, that's, that was not the instructions. That might be the way you picture this. They, they stand at the edge of the river, and the, the river waters open, and they walk through. That's not how it happened. God said, I'm not going to do anything until the priest's feet get wet. That's what he told him. He said, the soles of the feet of the priests have to be in the River Jordan before I'll do anything. 
You have to commit first. Then I will respond. To admire from a distance wasn't going to get any results. He said, you got to get in. you got to get your feet wet. And when you get your feet wet, I'm going to respond. And then he, said, he told Joshua, no one is going to be able to stand up against you all of your life. A lot of times we're afraid to get our feet wet, aren't we? Make that commitment. Make that change in our life. Do things differently than we've done before. But uh, this is a good time to think things through. Is there something you need to change in your life? Is there something that could be better? Is there someone you need to talk to? Is there a relationship that needs to be restored? Is there, is there uh, something you should do that you haven't done? Perfect date. We're starting a new year. Wouldn't it be nice to start 2022 with things resolved that you've left unresolved? And yet we're afraid of that commitment. But God doesn't respond until the commitment is made. The River Jordan flowed as it had always flowed until the priests got their feet wet. And when the priests got their feet wet, the river opened up. You know, it would be a shame to let this date January 2nd, to let it pass uh, th this opportunity. It's sort of an opportunity, a clean, I call it a clean slate opportunity. The first Sunday of the new year, where you could start everything with a clean slate, because that's what God does when we ask him to forgive us. He says, not only are you forgiven, I'm wiping it off. Of my, I, I'm not even keeping it in my memory. It's gone. I've forgiven you. I've forgotten it. It's as far as the east is from the west. It's like it's buried in the deepest part of the ocean. It's, it's gone. It's forgotten. It's over with. This is an opportunity, a clean slate opportunity. In the case of Israel, God surely was thinking, 40 years, how many times did I have to discipline them? How many times did they complain and gripe and carry on and not trust me? How many times have they messed up? But I'm going to offer them a clean slate. Moses is dead. Let's start again. Take action. That's what I'm saying to you. Take action. Make changes. Resolve what's pending. Uh, maybe it's ask for salvation if you never accepted Christ as your Savior. Maybe it's uh, to rededicate your life and say, you know, I, I, I'm going to do the things I have not been doing that I should have been doing. Or I'm going to be reconciled to God because there's things I, I have not confessed to him that have disrupted my life. And now's the time to do it. So, so that's my second piece of advice. Today, take action, make changes, resolve things. My third piece of advice and it's the piece of, only, the piece of advice uh, that Joshua received. Well, it wasn't a piece of advice. God doesn't advise. God commands. It was the commandment most often repeated by Jehovah to Joshua. And in, in, in just a one chapter, it is repeated four times. Four times God gives a command to Joshua. And the Joshua is, and the commandment is, be strong and of good courage. Then later he says, be strong and very courageous. Then he says, be strong and of good courage. And then he says, only be strong and of good courage. Four times in one conversation, four times in one chapter in the Bible, he says, be strong, be courageous. You're a child of mine. I'm going to get you through this. I did not choose you to cower and to tremble in fear. Back when my... Younger kids were in college. Of course, my younger kids aren't young anymore. But when they were in college, um, there wasn't internet. Uh, phone calls cost a fortune from where we were to where they were. Uh, they were in, the, in Conway, and we were in another country. And so we communicated, believe it or not, by letters. Can you imagine such a thing? And when I would write my kids in college, I ended all letters the exact same way. The last thing I would say as I concluded the letter was, remember who you are. Remember who you are. I'm a pastor. I'm a missionary supported by over a thousand churches. And you have my last name. Remember who you are. Christians, we need to remember who we are. We are children of the almighty God. There is nothing he cannot do. So we need to be courageous. Our world is, is we're going to be looking at some tremendous challenges in 2022. Our world is sinking deeper and deeper into immorality. It's become 
so normal that no one is even scandalized anymore, it, it, no matter what happens. Christians are the object of more and more ridicule. Our beliefs are ridiculed. We're systematically painted as being uh, redneck rubes who don't know how to tie our own shoelaces. And it's going to get worse. Apathy and apostasy are multiplying all around us. Our homes, our families are facing deadly enemies. And you know what? I, I don't think, believe things are going to get better, at least on a general basis. They can get better in my home. They can get better in my church. I don't have much hope for our world getting better. So, yeah, there are going to be some pretty big challenges. But I challenge you to be courageous and to accept huge, noble challenges and make a difference in someone's life. Make a difference in your own life. Take, uh, making the right decisions and, and changing things that are within your capacity to change. You, you can change things. God expects you to. He expects you to be courageous. He expects you to, to remember who you are. You are a child of God. You have God on your side. I, you know, I, I, some people think it sounds great to say God is my co-pilot. No, he's not. <laughs> You're not my co-pilot. He's the boss. You know, co-pilot around. If I'm in a plane, he's the pilot. I might be the flight attendant, I don't know, but I sure ain't the co-pilot. Well, he's in charge. That doesn't scare me or make me angry. That gives me great confidence and gives me great courage, courage and, and helps me to be courageous and strong as he ordered Joshua to be. He said, Joshua, Moses is gone. You're not going back. We're not going to do the same old things. You got to get across the Jordan. And he did. They got across the Jordan. And then the very first thing they did is they went to Jericho and had this tremendous success. I mean, Jericho is a story, is one of the first stories we learn in Sunday school. I, I don't even remember how old I was when I first heard the story of, uh, of Jericho. I don't remember the first time I ever heard the song, Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. Do you all remember that song? Anyone old enough here? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, we're still singing about it. Thousands of years later, this victory is they, they crossed the Jordan and, and they, they defeated the enemy at the very first chance. And they defeated it by blowing trumpets. Same God. Joshua's Jehovah is my Jehovah. Joshua's God is my God. I can expect him to be as great in 2022 as he was back there when they were walking around the walls of Jericho. So I challenge you to do what you need to do, what you should do, even if it's going to require a bit of courage and, and, and some big changes. Consider the prize not the price of being obedient. Believer, make the changes you should. Lukewarm Christian, do it. Obey. And then ask for big things from God. I believe last time I was here, I preached on the prayer of J.B.'s, if I'm not mistaken. And one of the things that J.B.'s asked of the Lord, he said, Lord, enlarge my territory. Say, Brother David, we're in McNeil. <laughs> We're not in Chicago or New York or Philadelphia or some great city where we can plan on building a church of 10,000 members. Do you know how important it is to just change one life? You don't know what a, a difference it'll make. You know, the, the preacher that preached when Billy Graham was saved, no one knows his name. I don't know if he ever, I, I suppose you could look it up and find it, but no one really knows it. And yet, how important. No one knows the name of the preacher that was preaching when Charles Spurgeon was saved in England. Look what a difference it made, that one person. And, you know, it, again, I, I'm going to look back just a little bit after I said, told you not to, right? Uh, when I go back to the mission field now at this point after, you know, my wife and I just had uh, the 50th anniversary of our election as missionaries. And I go back now, and what brings, brings me the greatest joy 
is seeing people that were my Sunday school kids that we taught the Battle of Jericho to, pastoring churches, teaching Sunday school, leading singing, school teachers that talk about the Lord in his classroom. Man, and you're thinking, and I thought they were just some straggly little old country kid, and who knows what they were going to be and what they were going to do. So, yes, it's important. And, yes, you can do great things for God by serving him here in McNeil, Arkansas, not as, only as an individual but also as a church because everything that God does with the church, he does it one person at a time. Everything that God does through the church, he does it one person at a time. So, they got all ready to do this, and you know what the Lord said to Joshua? One of the last things he told him, he said, Joshua, tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Right now, this is it, Joshua. Right now, tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow is going to be the first day. You know, I've heard that. Have you heard that saying about the dumbest saying I've ever heard? This is the first day of the rest of your life. I know. Well, obviously it is. But, you know, maybe that's something we should think about. Tomorrow will be the first day of the rest of your life. How do you want to spend the rest of your life? Moses is dead. 2022 is gone. The failures, the successes, it's all gone. It's never coming back. You don't get another chance. You don't get a do-over. That's one thing. It's sort of a, a, a scary thing when you think about it. We don't get do-overs in life. You, you make a mess, you just make a mess. Uh, if you sin, you sinned. Uh, but there's forgiveness, and there's the chance to start over, and God gives us that chance. So uh, there's a strange thing about advice. It can be taken or it can be ignored. <laughs> uh, ask any parent. <laughs> We're sort of experts at giving advice, and we've also learned very, very quickly, especially as our kids became adults, that a lot of advice that you give is going to be ignored. Well, I hope you won't ignore the advice that I've given today because I don't believe it was uh, Dixon advice. It actually was uh, taken from Scripture. For the, fa- for the last time, okay, look back. Make it the last time. Now look forward. Now today, take action, make changes, resolve things as of today. And lastly, be courageous. Act like who you are, a child of Almighty God. Would you stand, please?